start recording and let's do the agenda again. I know we said we were going to figure out the meeting stuff, but uh, there's always like a million things to do. Okay. Um, okay. Friday, June 19th. Agenda. Um, Sudhanshu. I know we need to figure out Sutanshu's merge command issue. All right. Let me share your screen, John. Oh, yep. Thank you. All right. All right. Here we go. And then, so who else has got stuff? Um, Algin, you're at the top of the list on my phone here. So you want to go first? Yeah, uh, I'm facing some errors in like the shared config thing. Okay. Uh, with config stuff, config loaders, or like configuration. No, no, no. Uh, the, uh, like I added the shared configuration. Thing. Oh, yeah. There seems to be some problem with context. Okay. Oops. Okay. Is that it for the day? Or? Yeah, just that. Okay. Just that. Cool. Yay. All right. Good news. Only one, only one problem. Um, let's see. <laughs> one problem can take a while, but we never know, right? Okay. So who's next? Let's see. We've got uh, Saksham. Uh, yeah, uh, I just want you to review my pull requests. Okay. And I'll go over the default stuff in the operation operation default. Oh, stuff. yeah. Over the weekend. Right. Okay. Over the weekend. Oh, okay. I haven't gonna... touched it yet. We'll go over defaults for operations over this weekend. Exciting. Okay, um, and then Himachu. Yeah, so I uh, you have to uh, review the PR classification models, and then uh, we have to discuss a bit on Wapil Rabbit. Oh yes, that's right. Uh... And also question answering, but I haven't read the tests. Other things are done, so. All right, cool. Uh, I, I don't think uh, you need to review that right now. Okay. Um, so let's just open this up and um, uh, label them what they should be labeled. Um, no, I'm out of coffee. No. Okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Oh, God. We have a lot of pull requests. Okay. Um, discuss what we'll grab it. Feature formatting, um, and then the what was the last one? Was the last one was uh, yeah question answering model, but I haven't added the test, so I think uh, we can wait on that. Okay, so this one is basically awaiting. I need to. I'm trying to use these more effectively. So let's see for ones that I have reviewed. Okay, so and then these ones basically, if they all have changes, then now they are not awaiting changes. Okay. Um, We should have it a awaiting review tag. Okay. Okay. Well, anything that's not awaiting changes is awaiting review. How about that? Um, all right. Okay. 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 Sweet. Um, or wait. Um, this is a uh, question answering model. And Yash, how's things going with you? Uh, I just had to discuss the cycle stuff. like. Oh, yeah. Through. And I'll go over the windows just this weekend and fix the next one. Awesome. I, I noticed that I didn't fix up the tests, the sub-module tests. For oh, yeah. So oh. Well, so what we should I do is we should really, when we're doing this Windows stuff, we should figure out how to get the main test suite running on Windows in the CI. Um, 
because that would be that would be the the real way to make sure that this works. Um, I have no idea whether everything works on OS X, but I kind of just assume it does. Does anybody have a Mac and do this on a Mac? I don't have. No. Okay. Um, Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, my dad has a Mac and he's been messing with it. So yes, it does work. Works fine. Yeah. Um, okay. That's good. Um, let's see. So let's see. Oh, yes. Um, Windows stuff. And then John needs to do the goddamn um, HTTP test. Make HTTP test work on Windows. Okay, and let me just open an issue for that. Okay. Um, how did we lose our little... Okay, there we go. Alright, okay, let's figure this out. Um... Mine had the cited stuff too. Oh, yes, that's right. The PR is off. And by cited stuff, you mean, um, do you want to talk, we just want to decide whether that importing should change or not? Yeah, that's, that was a thing to discuss. Like, I, I have been facing the problem while developing with an ID, like VS Code doesn't refer me things like it does usually. Uh, yeah, we might just want to mix that then. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think that was sort of a premature optimization, um, especially since we realized that like the scikit models are actually where this ends up being a new thing. So, um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, and uh, was there a problem with the PR uh, 715? Like, you asked me about that line, but I wasn't sure, like, I, what were you saying? Oh, 715. I may have just forgotten. It. Oh, this line. Oh, yeah, no, I think I just forgot to merge this. Sorry. Um, yeah, this looks good. I don't know why I didn't merge this. Uh Oh, yeah, yesterday I had like 20 tabs open, and then I was like, I don't know what's going on, and I closed them all, and so sorry. That's what happened. <laughs> um, okay, so. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, uh, uh, Scikit, remove all features, PR. Done. All right. All right. I like the way of doing this so far. I'm a fan. Oh God! So much organization. It's beautiful. All right. Okay. So let's see. Um, so Tantra's not here yet. Um, so Agen facing issues with shared config, reviewed PRs. Let's figure out which one of these are quick. Okay. We'll go over operations. Let's go operations this weekend. Um, created issue. Okay. Merged. Um, Okay, so still working on question and answering model is like there's is there anything to say about that or it's just sort of like status update? No, no, it's update. It's done. I just have to add test. So the okay. problem uh, earlier I was facing, so that all was solved. Okay, great. So uh, only tests are left. Yeah. Let's actually remove these here if we're not gonna. They aren't. They aren't sort of action items. So. Um. All right. It's constantly an exercise and learning how to do better project management. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see which one of these is going to be quick to knock out here. So, um, should we be using import lib? How about I think let's just decide no. Um, if it's messing with your IDE. And it's not actually speeding things up because the main bottleneck was uh, 
scikit, then the answer is sort of no. Um, does that sound good to everyone? Should we just change that stuff back? Is anybody attached to import lib on the uh, models? Oh, wow, we got two new stars. Sweet. We're going to do a release once I get all this clients. Okay, so did you guys hear me? No one said anything. All right, so we're going to go with where we're moving this. All right, so... All right, well... Poor Hashim, at least he learned how to use import lib, so that's always good. Um, let's see. All right, okay, let's make a new issue. There you guys, did you guys opt into the new UI? Everything's bubbles. I do. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's sort of like Twitter-esque. Um, let's see. Okay, where? Okay, what are we doing? We're gonna say model. Are all the bubbles misaligned for you too? Like it, it is happening for me, but some of like the, the text are is happening. off. Yeah. No, all everything. the bubbles are aligned for me, but I'm also on Windows right now, so you know things tend to work on Windows. <laughs> As much as I love Linux, I need to get my freaking work. I mean, I got my terminals open, right? Then this is my Linux setup, but I don't have like a Linux work laptop. Um, let's see. Okay, model. Um, remove import lib statements. Lib usage of third party dependencies. And, uh, we decided that since it messes with IDEs and when listing models, uh, you get the model names. Um, yeah, so I mean, the one, this is like, it's not, it's not going to be a big deal. So, mess with IDEs and was a premature optimization. Um, we're going to go back on all right and this is like I would say that's high priority if it's messing with your ID um it should be a find and replace, so that shouldn't be very long at all. Um, actually, that should be very, very, very short. All right, okay, sweet. Um, I should have closed that. All right, okay. Uh, need an issue. All right, so, and then... Um, so we are, let's just finish out Yash's yeah, stuff. So Windows stuff, um, basically, I know we've got my stuff. And then you said, uh, still need to make sure all the plugins work. Um, we need to enable the CI on for Windows, which is going to be interesting. Um, and then, uh, yeah, okay, so... Let's see. Um, all right, okay. Is that any other things we need to say about Windows stuff here? Is there an open PR? I have not. I see you guys saw was. I don't know if I'm totally up to date. Everyone was busy. I was like, looked away since last night, and there's a million things. All right, okay. So, Um, yeah, okay, so it looks like there's no active PR for Windows stuff right now, right? I'll open one next week. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds good. Man, our release is really dragged on and on. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I wanted to show you guys something. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, let's see. All right, great. Done. Um, let's just mark this as done. All right. Um, 
So let's talk about the um, Wolf Rabbit feature formatting. Um, I don't understand what's going on here. Um, can you give me the, the filling in Himachu? Um, yeah, so Did you if you can open, then maybe. I see. Did we comment back? Was it on this one or is it on? Or wait, no, it's not on this one. This is no, Wopa Rabbit has different. Okay. Um, oh, here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, the thing here is, uh, there are multiple ways in which the input can be given. Uh -huh. So the but at the end of the day, everything should be in the form of string, just like it's, uh, I, just like in the example that I have shown there. Yeah. So the problem with that is, uh, there's no standard script that people use to convert. So uh -huh. everyone like they they have their own custom script and they will convert it to format and they will push. So I have given two options. One is I have written a uh, script to change to a standard format. So either they can use that one or they can make their own script and they can just give us the formatted input. So there are actually two options. So this is the example for the second option when they are giving the input oh, for the second after option. formatting it. Okay, so that's yeah. now I'm understanding. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so you, we have an example where it is formatting it like for them right yeah. okay great yeah um yeah so so we can decouple this whole thing and uh, give it like that like uh, the way you told but then we'll have to decouple what they gave as a string and break them into features and then we can do that but that can get complex because there are a lot of things that are intrinsic in here they are not explicit most of the things are implicit just like mm. uh, you asked me now what is 1924 here yeah so yeah, so it, it's it's basically a, I mean, if you see it's a number, so it should be a feature value, but actually it's a feature name, and its value is one. That's uh, that's in like inter Jesus, okay. that is. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Nineteen twenty four actually is the index in the memory that they will use. So uh, this is a complex thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is definitely wacky. All right. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make yeah. sure. So, but it looks like okay. So this example. Okay, so yeah, this example covers Wait. a okay, oh my God, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so all these are now uh, I'm understanding. The user is a formatted string. Okay, so but so basically, we still okay. So I see what's going on here. Okay, okay. Um, so we definitely need an example, sort of, because yeah. So right now, I mean, this basically is like you can only you have to have your data formatted in Vopal Rabbit format to use this, right? So no, you have second option too. Okay, so but we don't have an example I, for that second option basically right now. Yeah, yeah, that is in the Python example, not the CLI one. Okay, okay. So, so like the, for the test, I have used that only, but uh, um, that that is basically no one can see actually other than us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for explaining this. Okay, so um, let's see. All right, so let's group model options for each other for all commands. Wait, I just hit start a review. What do you mean? Come on, GitHub, you're going to mess with my buttons and not do stuff? Like, come on. What is this? All right, okay, I'll just put it in the notes doc. It's going to be like that. Um... All right, so I guess it's not letting me put comments on this, so I'm just putting them in the review doc. 
or in the meeting minute talk. Um, I wasn't able to open the pull request for question answering. I I had to do it so many times. Oh really? They must. Yeah, yeah. GitHub was down for ten to fifteen minutes in the morning. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that also happened. Oh yeah, there it is. So it's like everyone just always throws. We're always like every if the GitHub goes down, it has any downtime. You get this thing for free, and we're all like, if it has any downtime, we all lose our minds. Like at least I do. Um, and everyone on Twitter. Um, let's see. Let's see. Still working on the question and answering model. All right. I think that's pretty much it on this one. All right. Okay. So let's just make sure that we have another issue open. Um, okay. So one thing that I'm thinking here though, is that basically you're saying convert to VW is true. Like if that's true, then we're going to do this. So I think probably, but so basically, if I have a regular record and I just use the Wolfle Rabbit model and I haven't specified convert to VW true, it's just not going to work, right? Um, you, you need to have all the columns uh, that are needed for the data. Then it will work. Okay. So wait a minute. So I mean, uh, I mean, the thing is, uh, I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying to understand if I took one of these. So basically, if I took this example here, right? And, but I made it VW, you know, model, then will this work? Or will I have to set convert to VW true also within the model config here? Uh, you'll have to say convert to VW. It's not okay. default. Default right. is false. So let's make, okay, that's basically, that was trying to, what I was trying to get at here. Because so, I guess I haven't put this up yet, but um, like one of, one of the things that's going to be really good to hear about what we've done is is and i was man, can i show you guys this thing i'll show you guys this thing um let's see um so did, did, I, did i show you guys the thing where we loot just loop through every model with model.load right and then try training to see which one gets the best accuracy yes, yes. okay basically yeah yes. right so that's the idea is like we want most of if we can get mo everything to be pretty much the same so if i like pass features and predict and i just sort of try accept like i'm pretty much going to get he hit every regression model right and i'll just like you know dump the failures on the the classification ones and the clustering ones, right? Like, I just don't care. And what I'm going to end up with is just a list of, you know, I'll end up with every single model and, you know, what the accuracy was, um, you know, sort of using default settings, right? And so if it breaks, if that, if this, if we have something that breaks that flow, like we should try not to do that. Um, so, right, because basically the VW model is going to break in that case um, because we didn't set convert to true. So we should probably have convert as like default true okay. and we should probably have like you know vw format or something as as the flag um so that so that um well so that you know that the the loop will work right um because that's that's gonna be one of the things i was thinking um with the web ui what we can do is when people put in their data, we can just sort of give them like a, and we should probably make like a command for this too, but sort of just like a run me all the models command, right? Or like, you know, a little UI that says, I'm just going to run every single model and tell you which one's the most accurate, right? And so like, we won't, it won't do any, you know, tweaking of the settings, right? You could tweak the settings, you could not, but basically you just throw in your data and say which features you care about and it's going to give you the most accurate model, right? Um, and so... We want to try to make sure that the configs are, are, um, sort of like lend themselves towards that. Um, so let's just say that we want to make um, so let's, uh, let's, because we want to be able to loop through all models and with minimal tweaks to configs. Um, oh, I need to get back to those Dal for Pi guys. Um, sorry, let me just. Um, let's change convert.
two VW two um, no like um, you know like to something that indicates a flag that indicates data is feature data is already in VW format um, so that users opt out of out of having of invert to VW rather than opt in. All right, okay. Um, and yeah, let's probably just do this in this pull request since you're already in there messing with the example. It's probably going to be, you know, a bit more yeah. pull request. Yeah, that'd be good. good. Yeah. Sweet. All right, great. Thanks. And then, so let's just... Uh, Review the question and answering. Low, 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 I can't talk. Okay, review the question and answering model today. Um, okay. John, is that all model thing already in? Uh, the what? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we basically, we need to write that. Um, I mean, I have code for it. I just need to make an example out of it. It would be very easy to do. Um, where is like a good... Where's a good, like, where would be a good place for it? Like, tutorials, like, maybe model, maybe we should just change this to model tutorials. Simple model, or writing, writing a simple model, packaging your model, and then, you know, finding the best model for your data or something. Does that sound good? That good. does, but recently what happened was I was trying a scikit model. I was just randomly playing with models, and one of the model I guess it was meant to break things. It it filled up all my RAM and my system. Oh, one of the models. Oh God. Oh no. Oh God. Um. So I, I was thinking about the same idea about DFM, like writing all the entry points and running all the models. Yeah, exactly. Context. But one of the models I tried was like this. I I and I don't know that how many models would do this. Yeah. So I. Do this. I think I think um, um, yeah, that'll be that's obviously less than ideal. Um, so I I think that's what Auto learn does. Like it goes through all the models and scikit and then yeah, that, I mean that'll exactly. So Auto learn is going to do that for scikit, but we want to you know. Um, we want to we want to do that for all the models, right? Including TensorFlow, everything that we have, right? So when we have Auto SK Learn, you know, we'll probably just you know in the loop of models that we're using, we'll probably just only use Auto SK Learn. Um, um, so because I'll I'll sh I mean let me just sort of flash this thing again. Um, uh, Oh, I did this other thing too. Yeah, so basically, um, this is this is what we basically just go through and oh, and I need to add this error. Why well, put an issue up for that? So, but basically, we just go through and we say like, you know, what's the list of models we want to try, and then you know, you just do, uh, um, you do. Uh, okay, God, uh, I was in the middle of fucking with this and then you just do model dot load right and then you try it all and then what i was going to also do is try to do every permutation of features so that you could try all the different features um which i thought would be cool right because if some features are actually messing with your model then you're going to try you're going to train the model on every permutation of features that you have um and sort of basically you know the end the end of this is basically you're just going to end up with the best model right um and so Oh, and then I also was messing with this thing that's sort of just like, uh, I saw this because, you know, all the models have like different ways of defining accuracy. So I made this thing, I thought this, I don't know, what do you guys think about this? This might be something that we should do a different way, but I thought this is one way we can do it, you know, but basically just um, like this MAE model. So the mean, what is it called? Mean, where the hell did it go? Mean absolute error. So basically just like, 
to make it so that you're comparing apples to apples on these models, right? Um, just basically wrap, change the, you basically wrap a model and um, you make the accuracy output uh, for the for the wrapper just run predict on the uh, the model that you're wrapping and then just do this mean uh, absolute error calculation. Um, I don't know, this might be something better like, I guess this is about this. I mean, this is a simple approach that works well for the, for the, it might just be something that we want like a, I don't know. I don't know. There's like lots of ways we could do this. Like this could just be a function that wraps accuracy, you know, um, or it could be, you know, the model wrapping the whole model. It probably doesn't make sense. Anyways, any thoughts? Uh, for all the models, we can have a model that uses other models. And that, uh, you mean like a DSFM, a new model that tries all the models, would that be a good idea? Yeah, a new model yeah. that tries all the models. That's a good idea. That is a great idea. Yeah. So let's actually, yeah. So we can make this concept. Okay. So let's, um, let's make this concept of like a, a wrapper model, right? And then we can have, you know, we, we can do things like, you know, okay, so this wrapper mo or well, yeah, so we can have two kind of like, I don't know, have you guys seen the, you guys have probably seen the um, um, async context manager list um, util async context manager list. Yeah, um, this is just enters every single context in the list. Um, so we could do like this, you know, we could use this guy and then we enter the context of all the models and just so that you can write wrappers easily around, you know, something that deals with a bunch of models like we're doing where we do this and then we could, uh, yeah, I could, mm, yeah. Anyways, yeah, I like that idea. Let's just make one model that runs all the other models. We can, if I can we can abstract it later. Um, so let's do that. Um, so nice, nice, good thinking, Yash. Okay, so... Um, let's make one model that wraps whatever models you give it, or just tries, or just defaults to all the models. Uh, this model will, um, run the, will run um, accuracy, or let's see, run, we'll try training each model, and let's go on Sutanshu. So this model will try training each model, and then use the best, the most accurate one for prediction. And this is kind of also now what I'm thinking about this MAE stuff is that, and I was looking at, I think, I can't remember what I was looking at. I was looking at some other library and then they had this concept of like, you know, well, I think Scikit and other places, they have this concept of like, okay, tell me how you want me to assess the accuracy, right? And the, the initial idea with the FFML was sort of just like, you know, do something reasonable and, you know, have one be the, I'm perfectly accurate. Um, but that obviously is not very helpful when we're trying to compare model accuracies and everybody's got a different way of defining what their accuracy is um so uh we need we need to implement some way of saying like okay like let's let's you know some way of comparing apples to apples right so um we need we need to uh come uh let's just let's see we need to come up with some way to uh specify how we want a the, the accuracy of a model to be um, determined okay uh, use mae etc um all right um anything else we have to say on this point No. All right. Uh, I'm just going to take this, make a screenshot.
All right. Uh... Oops. All right. So we're going over this question and answering model. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, da, 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 da. You, you have to review classification actually. Oh, classification. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Duh. Thank you. Um, okay, this is awaiting changes, obviously. Um, okay, so classification. I think there's like this should be done by now. I think. Yeah, you asked me to add the test for. Uh, I didn't see that we are. Uh, uh, we have started adding the test for those files too. Uh, so. You told about adding in CLI, so I tried that. So okay. I just want to make sure. That oh, that's right. Yeah, the testing. Okay. Yeah, because I was basically saying you've got these files, but we don't have tests for them. So, and then why don't you just basically make the test you have these files, right? Is that this one? I believe so. So, in integration only, I, uh, I added a different portion. Okay. Um,. Okay, so, yeah, because in integration you sort of did that. Okay, great. Um, yeah, okay, great, perfect. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, so, but, I mean, wait a minute. Oh, it's just going to actually create the directory PWD. Okay, so this is not really... Okay, so I was like, how, why is this working? Well, it's working because it's literally just creating the string. Um, so let's see, where are we when we do this? Are we cleaning this no, up? I'm replacing this, actually. Actually, I'm oh, replacing this with a temp directory. Oh, oh, you are. Okay, great. Um, you know, the other thing... Well, okay, well, you've got it already. So, yeah, equals directory. Nice. Good job, good job. Um just as a future thing, it might just be easier to um, uh, might just be easier to um, you know use the chdir. Um, let's see, do we have an example for that? I hope so. Probably not. Um, no, we don't have an example for that. So let's get let's open an issue to do that. Um, uh, also, I was thinking uh, we should standardize the way we pass the uh, directories because now we don't have default directory. So in all the examples, we have to like make uh, same thing everywhere. So either in, either we can do in current working directory, we make a folder with the name of the model that we are using, or something like that. So like for this yeah, edited, so we all the examples directly, are doing the same sort of thing. Is what you're saying? Yeah, so we have to like whenever, like whenever we need the directory, now there is no default, so we have to pass in all the examples, right? Uh -huh. so we should have a specific way uh, where to do that. Like earlier, we had everything in dot cache. Yeah. Uh, but now we don't have that, so we have to have a standard way of doing that. All right, let me move this stuff that's like all stuff that we all need to do and here all right so so uh, we need okay what else is like everybody stuff okay i think this is okay so we need a standard like okay so what you're saying is like we should come up with something that's like because some of some of the examples say tempter some say model dir, some are saying you know blah 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 like just standardize what we pat like you know everyone says model dir or something or what are you saying yeah, so like if you see in the train dot sh, I have to mention the output directory and logging directory. Yeah. For the example, right? Okay. So what I have done is I have taken the current working directory and then I made a folder. Yeah. So this is what I'm passing. So but the other, other examples I also need. So the other thing is what that should, we should probably, yeah, I mean, yeah. so this here, it's like the current working directory is implied, right? So this is sufficient here. Um, Right, because if you just give a path like okay. this, this implies, you know, that you know, it, it implies that you're starting with PWD. Um, so let's change those. Um, uh, we current 
working directory is always implied. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, unless it's specified that it will end up in the current working directory. Um, and then sort of like, this is uh, basically for the future, in the future, uh, it might be easier to do a, a width default.util.data or os.ch or just showing the whole thing there so you know where it is. Um, and then just uh, passing in anything for the directories because they'll be created relative to the temp dir so they'll be in it and they'll be deleted all right um in fact does integration cli test do that already Because I know we do that for the, uh, I know for the, um, no, we do not. We should probably just do that. Um, oh, no, there we have a relative ch -der. Well, it's a good one to know about. Just buried in here. Um, why is this in the test, async test case file? This should be in the OS file. All right. Okay, then. Um yeah, we should probably just, you know, we should probably just, um, let's just do it here. Like, because if we just do, so, so if we just do, you guys see what I'm saying, right? So, oops, do we have a async exit stack? Okay, great. What I'm saying is that if we just change directory into a temporary directory, like at the start of every integration CLI test, then we're always going to be, um, we're, we're, um, um, like we don't have to create a temporary directory. So basically we can always just use whatever relative paths and they'll get cleaned up because we're in a temporary directory. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let, let me get it. Sweet. Let's do it. Uh, I'll push this up and we'll see if everything dies. Uh, all right, so let's do... Oh yeah, we're probably gonna have a bunch of shit that goes wacky, but this case is uh, uh, get on temperature on setup. Ch dir to temperature on setup. Now that was badly worded. All right, and now when we run this shit, like when we run the, um, let's see what happens here. Now, anytime anybody just like, we don't have to worry about all this stupid temporary directory stuff. Like you can just pass whatever you want. Um, so we'll just. Okay. Don't like to do it. Okay. 
All right, and that, that, I mean, so does that sort of satisfy, I mean, when we set a standard, when you set a standard way, um, I mean, this isn't uh, exactly standard, but it's basically like, um, does this satisfy the standard way thing? Like if we just say, I mean, if everybody just says like, I mean, I feel like, yeah. We're, so what do you, what do you like, do, do we have more desire for, you know, quote unquote standard here? Like, cause I feel like this might not really address that. Like what, what do you, what do you propose? I think we should just have uh, like for, for passing, we can have the name of the model as the directory name or something like that. Okay, cool. Like, I think that's a good like plan. Here I'm passing HF classification models. Yeah, like that. that's a good idea. That's a great idea. All right. So yeah, let's do, okay. So when we are writing, okay. So where would be a good place for this? Um, or would be a good place for this in the documentation because we need to document that this is the way to do it. Um, so maybe when people are, maybe we need a little section in the model tutorials on contributing your model or something. Um, would that be a good place for that? Or under the contributing documentation? I mean, we've got a lot of stuff under the contributing documentation right now. It's kind of like, there's a lot of information, but Oh, Sphinx must have updated, and sure, maybe I'm just now noticing this. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff under the contributing documentation. I don't know if it's all super the best place for it to be. Um, let's see. I mean, let's see. Yeah, what do you guys think? Should we have a little section on, because we have the, we have now, we're going to have, you know, writing the simple model, packaging the model, and then we can have a section on contributing the model, and then it can talk about, like, how we write test cases and stuff. Um, or is there a better place for this? Should it go under contributing documentation? Uh, it shouldn't go under contributing, I think. It shouldn't, or it should? It shouldn't go under the uh, contributing section because that's for testing and setting up. Okay, yeah, that's sort of generic, wide, all like all over the place stuff. All right, okay, so let's put it under the... Does anybody have any objections to putting it under the model tutorials? Okay, let's do that then. So we need a standard way... Uh, we need to need to standardize on a format for model directories. Um, those, and we are going with the name of the model should be the directory used to store it. Um, this will be documented on a contributing uh, your model uh, page under the model tutorials. All right. Okay, so um,
Sweet. Okay. Um, and then, so yeah, let's change that, and then I think we'll be good here. Um, did I actually copy paste that URL and make that pull request? I don't think I did. Oh, I did. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Did it break everything? It did. All right. Okay. Well, we'll figure that out. Um, oh, yeah. Let's just mention that we did this. We are thinking are going to make it so all sub classes of mission so I test uh, I have a setup which sage throws them into a tempter. All right, and then you know, as a side note to this, um, um, I really, I at some point. Um, we should really go through all of the model test cases and um, basically make integration CLI test case like the, where the fuck are we? Okay, there we go. Because um, like, okay, so async test case is great, right? It's very basic. Um, but um, ideally we would end up with, we would have, you know, some of these, you know, context stacks um, because those are handy um, and even more ideally you know basically we would this would be like you know the base test case that every test case is from because then we don't have to do a bunch of you know extra work here and there because um, this is like I mean by the time you've got this thing's got like a lot of like I mean it doesn't got a lot but I mean you know the having the required plugins is is handy and then having the context stacks is handy and being in your own tempter is also handy um, so like that kind of stuff is helpful in a lot of test cases and would probably help us reduce the amount of code we're writing um, which is always the goal right so um, okay so that that's basically the resolution on that one is um, uh, let's remove pwd from uh, .sh files, then it'll be ready to merge. Okay, so just ping me, send me a ping on that one uh, when that's done, and I'll, I'll just merge it. Um, so, yeah. great. Sure. Thank you. Okay, um, let's see. I guess we're working our way backwards here. So Saksham, um, let's see. Which ones are we reviewing? All of them? Uh, yes, the, uh, the image processing one is ready. All right, image processing one is ready. Nice. Looks good. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I'm going to go create a new plugin here. Okay. Okay. Looking good, looking good. Uh, uh oh. Are we sure this works? Or oh, you're reading. Are you reading it in? That's probably why it works. Okay. Looks like we're missing a um a backslash there. Uh, uh, it works. It works? This works? Okay. Yes. Wow. What the fuck? That works? You can just do that? Wow, I've been adding black backslashes. Think of all the backslashes I've wasted. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. That's great to know. Wow, I've been, I have lots of places where my backslash will go over 80 columns when I don't want it to do that. 
Like I've had, I've, yeah, anyways, anyways, anyways. No need to dwell. Sometimes, on that. sometimes uh, if there's an extra space, it won't work. So mm. maybe. That oh yeah, the, that's probably what it was. Yeah. Okay, so one thing here. Let's just. I think we can probably just do this right now. So the test, it's it is passing. So, um, let's just split this up into two things. So it's um like this. Um, that should work, right? Let's see. That way, it's sort of more clear that we've got two things going on there. Um, this looks like it's syntactically correct to everyone, right? All right, it looks syntactically correct to me, so I'm just going to do the little commit suggestion, and we're going to remember that the CI tests were passing, so it should be fine. Um, that way we split uh, that off that line. Because um, since we did that, oh, I guess these guys are kind of like, ooh, we should probably format those the same too. Um, let's format those the same. If we've got more than, so, I mean, you guys know what I'm why I'm doing this, right? It's because if we've got sort of like more than we we do this with a couple other things, right? Oh, I missed the backslash. Um, if we've got like m multiple options to a um, okay, and then this one is also it just makes it more clear that these things are options within the list for that um, so let's check this out where did you go okay this looks see this should be i mean i would say this is a little more readable um, yeah it's a little more readable okay um oh and then um all right, okay. And then the other thing is it looks like we have four spaces here. Well, and then I just made it two spaces here, so I should have made it four spaces, damn it. Um, it's okay. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Um, I won't take everybody's time with the spaces. Um, okay. Looks good, looks good, looks good. Okay, good. You got the documentation. Nice. Um, one thing is, I think restructured lists or restructured text requires that we have um, spaces in between uh, list elements. Does anybody else sure on that? I'm pretty sure, but unless anybody else knows differently, I'm pretty sure that that is a thing. Um, okay. Looking good, sweet. This is exciting. Fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, and then, so yeah, you're adding this, and then you have another PR where you're going to go. Or wait, no, you already updated in here. Yeah, obviously, I just looked at that. Great. Wow, this is exciting. Now we can actually have the PNGs named PNG. Fun stuff. So, uh, uh, should we have to add a J JPEG config loader too, right? Yeah, yeah, we will have to add a JPEG config loader, yeah. Um, I mean, we could just, so, I mean, one thing that we could do is we could just put all the, um, we could get rid of the PNG config loader, like, cause we have DF yeah, config thinking. loader PNG and just have DF of ML config loader image, right? That's what you were thinking. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Yes. Yeah. So let's do that. Um, so, um, um, let's get rid. Okay. Let's make an issue. Rid of. Let's rename. I can take care of that in a, another PR because when uh, when this PR gets merged, the things that I will do uh, ahead will get a lot easier because then it won't be amnish PNG in the master yeah. branch. Yeah, sweet. All right, let's do that. Um, you so in another PR, right? You said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um. So, uh, Do this. Oops.
Uh, yeah, because like that's obviously just to reiterate the reason why we do the packages the way we do is because like dependencies belong in like packages. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. I think that was, let's see, do we... This looks great. I'll oh, probably those YAML files look. Uh, let's see. Alright, okay, I think, I think that was that, right? Oh, yeah, this... Um, Suggestion of batch, add suggestion of batch. Um, I think we should be good here. Okay, just since I'm doing that, just gonna go through here and uh, wait. Not this one. All right, okay, let's start while I'm doing this. Let's start. Okay, we got another thing to review. Um, or can you go and just make these all two spaces, Sakshom? Can you pull us down? And uh, Yeah, I'll rebase and make the changes. Okay. Oh, yeah, do we have, is this a rebase? Oh, yeah, you actually, wait, did you, did I, yeah, I screwed up. Ah, my bad. I'm used to, you guys are doing such a good job with the, uh, with the commit messages now, I was sort of, I was used to just sort of like a bunch of commit message and then I threw more of these on and then it was a squash. But now that you've, you've done it so nicely, now I just destroyed your nice, um, I do this, no problem. All right, let's see. And this is like something dumb probably. Thank you. All right. Okay. What happened? Something dumb. It was passing before. Okay, let's find out what happened here because this could be some kind of weird thing. Oh. Uh oh. Okay, this is a good thing that we. I'm glad I found this. Uh, okay, so. Issues. Issues, issues, they, issues. Uh, they recent, like, like, two days ago they weren't failing. Yeah, so let's. I mean, we should be rounding this number. Um, test. Let's see. Examples. Test. Quick start. Round. Output of. Yes. Yeah, this is a really easy one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I screwed up your beautiful commits. Uh, let's see. So. All right, okay. Um, new directory source. Um, I don't remember. I looked at this. I must not have merged it for some reason. Why didn't I merge it? I probably just forgot. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, because we took the images out. That's right. Nice. Okay. And this is working? Uh, this is not working. This the is right not working. Bytes is not making a, a, not a, the making image, a valid image. PNG image. Yeah, it's not making a valid image. Oh, oh, because it's we're just creating. This is, it's not encoded as a PNG. Um, yeah, I was. I tried ah. to I tried to do the same thing, but there, then there comes the NumPy dependency. Ah, there becomes a NumPy dependency. Okay, um, and then this is okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, okay. 
How do we do this? Wait, a NumPy dependency? Like you're using, we're using num np dot zeros in, in the tests. Oh, in the test. Oh, was I doing? Oh, is that what I did? Damn it. Um, let's see. And this is just directory source. Yeah, you're right. Crap. I did do that. Oh, but this is just a. What is this? Um, This is just a massive array. Um, uh, yes. All right. So that well, that's easy. Then great. Okay. So we're all good to go. Then all we have to do is zero for range. Uh, I mean, I don't know if this is going to create a valid PNG image though, because it's like, what is the encoding of a PNG? Doesn't it? Have, it probably has like a header file and stuff. Yeah, if the data type is uh, unsigned in date, right, or creating the image, so the list won't be of that data type. Oh, okay. So what we need is like a struct pack. Um, okay. Well, what we need is just to write thirty thousand zero bytes to a file, but that also like, what is the encoding of a PNG? Um, Does it have magic bytes? You guys know what I'm looking for, right? Do you guys understand what I'm doing? Because this is sort of a good thing to know. Okay, so let me just explain just in case. Um, but uh, like, you know, file types will usually have magic bytes that they start with. And so for PNGs, it looks like this is probably our sequence that we are looking for. Maybe even, wait a minute. Yeah, PNG, PNG header, right? And so usually you can tell, like, if you're doing, if you, like, don't know what some file is, um, or, like, you use the file utility, you know, um, and... It, it does well it does some more analysis but it'll do thing it'll say like ah you know this is a png uh, image file and then it you know actually like goes and looks at it because it understands pngs but usually the way that you determine what a file is without looking at an extension is you look for these magic header bytes um, and so if you've got like an elf file um, uh, bash xxd which bash head so if you got an ELF file, they always start with this, which is basically like uh, 7F and then ELF. Um, and an ELF file is like a Linux executable. Um, so basically the thing with the PNG files is um, they obviously have some headers. So like PNG file format. And there's this person who makes this wonderful images of them, like ELF. One time, I think I've told you guys this before, one time I was... I was Googling and I was like trying to figure out this image because it's just wonderful. This somebody, somebody makes these and, uh, Oh, this person. Um, and, uh, they're just beautiful and they really help you understand the file formats. Um, Oh my God. Is there a repo for this? And I have it started already. Oh my God. This is beautiful. Um, okay. Uh, this is exactly what we want. Um, so basically, oh, you go. Okay, so let me put this in the notes because this is just like too good. Um, this thing is great. Um, so helpful for understanding file formats. Okay, this is like you, you'll probably end up referencing this at some point. It's really good. Um, so let me just put some notes here. So um, uh, numpy dependency, no, not an option for building uh, PNGs. Sorry. Um, let's see. We'll, we'll rebase and remove 
spaces from uh, and make sh files indented at two space level. Um, all right, so let's just like there's probably PNG in here somewhere. Oh, come on. I need png.png. .png. Where is it at? Yes, png.png. .png. These things are so good. I love them. Okay. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Okay. So, oh, God, okay. Uh, Zlib. With CRCs. Oh, God. Uh, okay. So, yeah, basically, uh, we'll just go over, like, what's going on here just for the for the fact that you'll run into this in the future. So, basically, it's sim if you look at all these images, it'll be, you'll find similar things, right? Usually, if you've got some kind of file format, it'll start with, you know what how do I, how do i what's the magic number like magic bits or signature is what they're calling it here um and then you know it'll have some information about like what's the size of this file uh and how do you decode it and that's what we're seeing here um so that you know like how many bytes to read and stuff and you know like with the idx um for example with the idx source um when we wrote that um it's actually a really good example um yeah, it had magic and size. Yeah, exactly. That's the Idx first three two. is better. Yeah. So yeah, so this is actually a pretty good example of how you might deal with a new binary format that you don't understand, right? Um, you would sort of hope that this person has made a beautiful graphic. Um, you would go look it up, and then you would start using the struct module. Um, and so, um, so basically, the struct module. Um, The struct module lets you pack and unpack binary data in whatever format you'd like. Um, and so uh, it's very helpful for, you know, dealing with these binary data formats. So if we were going to do this, we might, um, you know, we'd go find our reference. And if you can't find the reference that's like nice and beautiful and colorful like this, probably what you're going to end up with is uh, an RFC document um, and an RFC or you'll end up playing in the Papua New Guinea Rugby League. Um, an RFC document uh, tells you exactly the... So most most things on the internet, like most things that we deal with have an RFC. Like either, like people, things will either have, you know, like if there's multiple implementations of something, like chances are someone has taken the time to write up like a spec. Um, and an RFC is also pretty much like a spec. And so when you're dealing with something that follows a spec, um, first, I mean, the first thing you wanted to go do is find the spec. Because um, while this is going to be helpful, it's still going to, we're going to be going, you know, what the hell in a few minutes here, right? Uh, but we're not going to do this whole thing. I just want to kind of overview of what to do when you, when you have to deal with this. Um, and so uh, you're going to want to go find the spec and you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to like, you, you're not going to be able to read the whole spec um, because these things are really like, look at how long this thing is. It's insane. Um, and we wonder why there's security vulnerabilities when you parse um, images and videos, right? Um, not. Um, it's because this isn't a mess, right? Um, and so, and they're going to have like lots of like, especially, okay, so some of them are worse than others. Where's the DHCP one? That one's pretty good. All right, so you guys know DHCP, basically, uh, this is how your router assigns you a dynamic IP address on your no local network, or sometimes it's used just on wider networks. Um, and they're going to have this sort of language where they say must, must not, should, should not, and there's another RFC that defines these things. Um, there's an RFC for all these the words here. Um, basically, anything anything that's like a, so people follow this thing uh, when they program, it's, there's usually an RFC for it. Um, and so this one's, I feel like this one used to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they're nice. They're going to have a little thing like this, sort of like we're referencing over here with our, what the hell is going on in this, you know, binary data. Um, and then they're going to start telling you things like, you know, what, 
what bytes, and this one isn't actually in octets, so that's like what um, uh, that's like you know file mode permissions and stuff when you're encoding in in six sixteen bits, yeah, sixteen bits, um, and or is it eight bits? No, it's eight bits. Yeah, wait, I can't remember. Just Google it. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, yeah, and where's a good example here? So it's going to tell you what's going on. Yeah, lots of them have these, especially with network protocols, it's going to be like, okay, this is the message and how you're going to decode this message, right? And so for the PNG, what we're going to look at is like there's going to be a bunch of blocks like this, right? And so it's probably going to tell us things like, okay, when you hit this block, here's how you decode it. Um, this has got a whole back and forth. There's, there's good examples in here somewhere. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, Okay, yes. So this one, for example, this is like, okay, here's the discover message, right? And here's the cases which you would see this. And here's how you're going to decode that packet from above, right? And what, what kind of things are going to be in that packet. Um, and if there's going to be more data appended to the end of that packet, what is it going to look like? Um, and so this PNG one is probably like really nasty. Um, so let's see. I mean, ideally, so... God, how much effort do I want to spend to avoid saving a few kilobytes? Um, Oy vey. Um, okay, yeah, this is not going to be straightforward, is it? Yeah, so basically, oh, maybe it is. Sample CRC code. Okay, yeah. Uh, sometimes they give you sample code and stuff. Um, yeah. All right, well, I was hoping we could just sort of encode a PNG file, um, but uh, it's looking like, oh, you know what? Why don't we just do that? Actually, wait a minute. That's that's what I was going to go for with this. So here's another thing that I like to do when we hit a problem like this is basically where's that library? Um, the one we're using for DF, or config loader PNG, DF config loader PNG. Here's another thing that is like a, nice way to get started on this is you use something to create what you want um, and then you look at it and you look at the examples and you start to see how does it change right so um, image open okay where is this the, is this pill we're using yeah we're using pill okay I got a little spider -like yeah in, in PIL uh, there's a image dot new image dot new Perfect. Okay. Um. So, uh, are you suggesting we use image dot new for this testing? Yeah. I'm, well, so what I'm suggesting here is that we basically. What I'm suggesting is that we create okay so here's what i'm hoping here right and it looks like maybe this thing is zlib compressed so that's like not going to be so great um but ideally in, in a perfect world here we might have something kind of like the idx source where it's got a header and then just like a bunch of bytes right and in that case we could just write out the header and then write out the bunch of bytes and then we'd be you know then we'd have our valid images but if this is like something where it's like you know going to be encoded in some way and there's like no pattern, then um, then we're just kind of like screwed, right? Um, because we uh, we like um, we're not gonna like we're not gonna we don't have time to go add a bunch of code to like zlib compress a bunch of zero pixels in the format like to to basically write this function, right? We don't have time for that. Um, so. Um, You know what we can do though? We can just add this to the test dependencies. Mm, do we want to deal with that? Maybe. Um, yeah, we can just add this to the test dependencies of the main module. There's no reason why we can't have dependencies on things for testing. In which case, we can start throwing NumPy in there if we wanted. Just don't want it for the main released code. Um, so let's see. 
Okay, let me just stop this. I'm just going to stop this. We're wasting time. Um, so, but that covers, like, for, for whenever you get, because you get, there's no doubt in my mind that you will have to deal with some weird file format one day. So there, there you go. Um, that's how to do it. Um, let's see. Um, all right, okay. Let's just do that. So I think we're already depending on HTTP test anyways, so what the hell. Um, yeah, we already have a bunch of dev dependencies. Like, let's just what's what's more dev dependencies. Um, okay, so let's do that. So let's basically just create these files dynamically using um, where the hell did it go? Can you, do you know how to do that? Is that like, are you familiar with that? Or do you think? Yeah, I can do, I can or do this, do this stuff with image.new very easily, but I didn't do that because uh, of dependent. this dependency. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, so let's do, and then that's, that's sort of like, this is a disclaimer for everyone now, like we're opening the door on, you know, dependencies in the tests. Because uh, for some reason I hadn't, just like that was a pretty obvious thing that didn't cross my mind um so because we just don't want them in the main library right um uh okay so let's say here so uh we are opening the door for um, third party dependencies in tests um, add whatever you need to set up dot py top tests require required I don't know I don't know what it is um, Tests require, yeah. So just go for it if you ever need to add it. Um, okay, um, let's see. Okay, so that's pretty much that. I mean, so let's do what we talked about and add pill and numpy. We could, let's just add numpy while we're at it because I'm sure one of us will want to use numpy for something. Um, Okay. Two tests require. Okay. Um, let's see. And then this one is the fix, right? Oh uh, yeah, it's the fix for for that issue. All right. And great, perfect. Uh, do we need a change log for this? Update CSV source and I overwrite config loaded data to every row. Um, yeah, this probably deserves a change log entry under fixes um, because if someone was experiencing this issue, then this is a good thing to note that we changed. So let's add to the change log. Um, Add this under okay. fixes. Yeah, this is probably should go under there, uh, and then I'll merge it. So just ping me on anything. Basically, if you guys finish when you finish something, ping me with the the at. Um, okay. All right. Okay. I think we're good on that. Um, are we good on your stuff, Saksham? Uh, you didn't go completely over the directory source. Oh domain. yeah. Uh, well, oh yeah, the rest of it's fine. I, I've looked at the rest of it a few times, so I think, except, oh, I didn't, I meant to do this. Like, uh, okay. Let's see. I have added usage, usage of high level dot savior. I need some uh, review on that if that's how it should be. I'm a little confused about that. Uh, 
Uh, no, this is not how that should be. Or wait, um, wait a minute. Um, yeah, not exactly. Um, let's see. No, no, that'll work. That'll work. Yeah, that should work. Um, yeah, that should work. That works. Looks like that works to me. Um, so, but, okay, so the thing is, yeah, that looks like it works. Um, what is, I mean, what's going to happen when you do that, though? Like, it's going to save the image contents, too, right, to that source. Yeah, so I was trying to write the CLI for it, but it was just giving me an error of file name not found. File name not found? Did you do, I mean, it would be, I mean, just, just, just should I be. did it just like in data flow source, we do it. Yeah, like I mean, it source. should be source, save, and then the source, so like CSV or JSON, and then yeah, source, like that, like that. save, file name. Yeah, it's not working like that. I don't know. Did you do source, save, allow empty? Yeah, allow empty and retry. Okay, uh, can you show what's going on? Yeah, just a second. I'm on a different branch. Uh, just give me two minutes. Okay, cool. Um, so let's see. Um, uh, okay. Um, Agen, what's the issue with shared config? Yeah, uh, so uh, can you pull down that branch and run the test? Yeah. So I messed up the syntax, I only noticed it after, but if this works, changing the syntax would be fine. All right. It's in test config, test shared config. Test config, test shared, okay. This is what you're seeing? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's check this so out. So I can see that the config is actually getting fast when I print it. I can't understand what this is. Uh, change this real quick just so because we should probably use this places um, yeah i also want to ask that i forgot what this index was yeah and it's just i think it's just this all right um all right this is gonna auto format everything okay same error great um <laughs> same error great Okay, so imprinter 
them. Okay, great. Looks good. No context. Okay. Self.mem. Okay, wait. Why did self.mem exist? So I think we're looking for mem context here, right? Because we should be in the operation implementation context. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's I see. Let's see. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, class, config. Wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. Okay. Config class. Okay, this should be an actual class. Wait. Uh, wait, what? No, uh, wait. The name. Yeah, like I messed up that syntax. So, ideally, uh, it should be just the name. It should just be the class. Uh, actually, we want to share the configuration, right? Wait a minute. Um, yeah, uh, 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 don't change that syntax. Like I'll explain what's happening. So, uh, like the syntax we want is actually uh, we just mention the config CLS. Then in the hope data flow configuration, we specify the name and the, but I messed up the syntax and now it just okay. works like this. That's okay. That's okay. But if okay. we fix the error, uh, we can change it back. Okay. So. Wait, uh, okay. Okay. Config class is not want. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Uh, okay. So, no okay. syntax is missed, but if we fix this error, I can change the syntax to the correct one. What are you going to change the syntax to? Uh, so, uh, uh, can you check? Yeah, the okay, I'll, I'll fix there. Yeah, let's see. Uh, like link issue. The main issue, okay. Oh, yes, I didn't see your issue. Okay. Uh, oh, I just created it like 10 minutes ago. Oh, okay. Um, so let's see. Yeah, the collected syntax would be something like that. Okay. This is what, yeah, okay. So this is what we were thinking, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Shared config. database query config. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. I think, I think the confusion I'm having is coming from the fact that I'm wondering, oops. Okay. The confusion I'm having is Turn on logging. Okay. Initializing operation implementation get single with base config. So, okay, okay, wait a second, wait a second, all right, okay. So, uh, okay, okay, so, okay. So the intent behind what I was saying here was that if you say 
db here, it's going to instantiate the object and then give you, basically it's going to put a reference into configs. So the changes for yes. this should have been localized to, to data flow. Or wait, not data flow, but yeah, to data flow, I think. Um, let's see. Or maybe to the initialization, but let's see. Config. Let's see. So, yeah, so configs ends up. Okay, uh, I know what. I know why this is happening. Okay. It's because this is a mess. Um, let's see. All right, so we should really be loading these things when we load this is why this is happening so we should be loading this is so this is this is like this is like this is this is this is not something that you did um this is probably something that i did um so we don't do anything to configs when we load the data flow right now right um so what we should be doing is actually like validating that configs is is you know something reasonable because I believe what we do is we just pass in like where do we actually access the data flow configs? We access it in like initializing the data flow and in yeah, op the correct yeah in op empty config yeah because we're this is all backwards this is ass backwards is why um, let's see um, yeah we're like we're like parsing these we're okay yeah we're like not parsing out those config objects when the data flow is created right we're parsing them out when we're instantialized instantiating the operations yes. right and that's gonna lead us to hell here because this is like that's we need to especially for the shared configs we need to have instantiated the we need to have instantiated the object already um because that's like the point of the shared config, right? Is that we need to have instantiated the object um, because if we don't, so, okay, so, sorry, let me let me just like uh, reset real quick. So, so what I currently do is like when the data flow is initialized, I uh, go through the list and like initialize the objects, then uh, like let the operation know that this thing is shared with the dictionary and in the of the creator when the implementation when the implementations are initialized, they would have already uh, got the initialized. Okay. So let's see, DF memory. Okay, if shared name, data flow operations, if shared yeah, name. Just okay, but this is the thing is they can't be, we can't, like operations shouldn't need to know anything about sharing stuff, um, right? Because uh, yes, this yes. is. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, this is the, because I messed up the syntax. So okay. uh, this wouldn't be the, like, Okay. So, yeah. Um, uh, okay, okay. I get what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? So config CLS, yes, yes, yes. Config CLS shouldn't be a string, it should be an object. And, like, they, they exactly. don't care whether this thing is going to be shared or not. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is that, is that the current way where we're doing things is broken, right? It only like it works well. Like, it works fine, right? So right now everything works fine because only an operation, like the operation, cares what its config is, and it'll just instantiate it when it gets it, right? But okay, how could we we could maybe simplify this? So right, we won't find out about errors and configs until we go initialize a data flow um, when you create a data flow it's not going to do anything with those configs unless they're like if they're in dictionary format right rather than actually instantiated objects like we have with that python file that was in the gist that was the example right in that case you know it's got an instantiated object right and so that stuff in op what that what that code in op is doing is let's bring that up bim df well, base or df base from df, well, df base Um, or maybe if it's even an operation implementation, where is it? Uh, yeah, this is bad. It should be in there. 
Okay. Where did that go? Yeah. Okay, so here's the stuff from Share Config. Yeah, so this, 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 well, this shouldn't even be here. This should be in the implementation base class. So that's like first problem, right? Right now, what happens is when you, it basically is like, okay, if the config class, if I have a config class and my config is a dictionary rather than like an object, then I'm going to convert it, right? Um, but the thing is, the thing is that, so that, that's like, so that, that means that all of these things that like, when so imagine we have like a YAML file, right? So we have a YAML file and all our configs are in the YAML file. Well, right, this, what this code is doing is basically it's, we're lazy, we're lazy loading all of those configs. We're loading them when the operation is initial, is initialized rather than when the data flow is initialized, right? And so there's like two approaches that we could take here, right? We could go through and we could, um, initial we could go through and we could look we we the right way to so there's two ways that we could do this right we can continue lazy loading or we can make it so that when you instantiate a data flow you end up with instantiated configs right so if i have like a plugin for one of them well then it's going to resolve the plugin at time of of you know doing from from dict on the data flow um so the downside to that is basically we have to like go traverse through every single dictionary in configs and shared configs and like you know work our way back up um like we have to like traverse all the way down into every single dictionary and then work our way back up and then like instantiate you know plugins as we see plugin structures right um or what is that called is config dict i think we have a function for it. yeah so basically we have to traverse all the way down every single dictionary and then look at something and see if it is a config dictionary if it is instantiate the object go one level up right so we have to do that sort of recursive thing um which might be the right way to do this because then we end up like actually resolving you know we'd actually end up knowing whether a config is bad when we load the data flow right we would know if a data flow is going to work or not right because right now we don't know until we try to instantiate the objects um the other upside to that approach is that now with shared config, basically, if you go through a config object, like if you go through, if you do this for shared configs first, and then you go through configs, and you see that, um, and you see that it's a string, um, then you know that, um, then you know that you just need to make it a reference, right? So you have this dictionary with you know some operation instance name equals a string rather than a instantiated config object well okay that means that that string is whatever that is in the dictionary and shared configs um so that now we actually have our system if, if we do it that way now we actually have our system where we're actually pointing to the right instantiated object right um and then but the other way we can do it is we can continue lazy loading and if we continue lazy loading, we can't continue lazy loading with like, shared configs, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, we can initialize all the shared configs, I mean, the initialize data flow. Yeah. Then while we are going through the instance name and uh, we see that, uh, we can just assign to the op, then just continue what we are doing here. Yeah. I think that would work. That would... That would work, actually. Yeah, that would work. I think, yeah, what, yeah, because yeah, you're saying basically, and that actually is easier because we don't have to traverse down all of them. They're all top yeah, level. Yeah, yes. Okay, yes, definitely. Yeah. That's a good way to go. Yeah. So, yeah, because then you basically just look up in self.mem before you instantiate the operation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good plan. Good plan. Um, I'm glad we sorted that out. This stuff is, like, yeah. ridiculous. Um, there's, like, a lot going on in there. Um, okay, so... Yeah, but it's actually like I still have to go through it because I have to start the distributed orchestrator. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, because this is going to be important when you do the distributed orchestrator stuff. I'm, I'm assuming. I'm not sure yet, but I assume that having a shared config thing will be something that, that well, I don't know. if eh, It probably won't be important for the distributed orchestrator per se, but it's definitely important yeah, for the operation. Yeah, I think the code in that Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so let's also make an issue that says we need to move this stuff into the base class here because this should really not be in the op decorator because now we're getting different behavior. So, okay, so so you're clear, okay. Yeah. Okay, you're clear on what we're doing There's there. There's one more log. Uh, can yeah. you uh, take the code in, like, the base file in DF? Can I do what? Uh, can you open up the base file in DF? and go to line 350. Here? Uh, in DF, the base. Oh, in DF base. base. PY. Oh, that is where I am. DFML DF base on line 350. I may have, it may have auto formatted the file, so. Because so I've got auto formatting on. What, what are we looking for here? Uh, what is that uh, user's config? What's it for? Oh, you know, I think this used to be used for something, and now it might not be anymore. If uses config, oh yeah, no, okay, this is what this is what it is. So basically, uses config is a shorthand. Where are we? Are we actually using this anywhere anymore? Are we using uses config? Um, let's see. Okay, so this is a shorthand. Oh, we may not be using this anymore. The reason this exists is because um, for this exists because at some point, and I'm, I have a branch where I'm working on this, but at some point we will have when the op decorator decorates a function that is not asynchronous, it will uh, it will by default call it within loop run and executor. That's going to be the default that we set up at some point, right? Because in, unless you pass some, you know, a parameter to the op decorator that says not set thread safe, right? Um, because usually if you're writing, you know, if you're not, if you're writing something that doesn't involve async code, it's usually because it's CPU bound. Um, and so therefore, you know, we're going to, we're going to run it in a thread, right? And in the case we run it in a thread, the um, we can't pass self uh, because self is probably not going to be something that we can um, serialize um, with the pickle protocol across through the executor. Um, but we probably can pass the config because the configs are always guaranteed to be serializable. And so that's what this is for. Um, and obviously we don't have that yet, um, but that's why it exists. Is So basically if you have an argument, I believe, yeah, I believe what this does is it goes through and it says if you have an argument where the annotation is what you said your config class was, then uh, that that we're going to pass that to you um, as your, you know, okay. we're going to we're going to give you that okay. config, okay. Okay. Um, and that yeah, it just it yeah, it eliminates the need to use self um, if we're in that situation. Okay. okay. Um, we should write this down. Um, yeah. And uh, the CTX ender and IMP ender, like uh, those are lambda functions, right? So how are they getting serialized? Uh, like, I mean, those aren't going to get serialized. Those happen. Um, those happen when we instantiate, basically. So there's a um, there's a okay. So there's this is this is this is this happens because of um, DF2. There's this helper function that I created because I got sick of this, um, this a inter stack, and basically what it does is um, it goes through and it basically just is going to call set attribute, and so it's going to go through and it's going to say, okay, a inter call a inter on r checker and then set attribute of self r checker to whatever the a inter object was, right? Because a inter returns something. Usually it returns self, but you know it might not. Um, and then it also has this call parameter where we basically are saying like, okay, should we call this thing? Um, and so what imp and imp inter and ctx inter are is basically they are these dictionaries, right? Where we're providing a lambda, and the lambda is going to return whatever the hell you want to enter the context of. Um, so in that way, it's, it's a, it's a very shorthand. It's, it's obviously like it makes it's it shorthand for the double context. Yeah. It's entry. shorthand for the double context entry, right? And you don't have to make a double context entry. You could just do imp enter, or you could just do context enter, okay. but it lets you set up, especially like with the PyPy, um, 
operations and safety, it's like that makes this really clean, right? Um, because you can you can see examples. Should I? Should I? Or not in safety and should I? Um, oh god damn it! God damn it! Oh, oh yeah, it moved. That's why. Yeah, so this makes this really clean when we do. You know, you you need a you need an HTTP session that's present for the lifetime okay. of your operation. Much cleaner than writing a whole context. Um, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why that exists. Um, and so, so this exists because eventually we will um, uh, make non-async functions wrapped with op uh, run in run with loop dot run in executor um, when that happens it's likely that self won't be serializable uh, into the thread slash process uh, configs are guaranteed to be serializable. Wow, that's a hell of a word right there, serializable. Um, is that even a word? Who cares? It's a word now. Um, let's see. Configs are guaranteed to be serializable. Therefore, this lets us define operations that have configs and need to access them when running within another thread. And then I will, I will add that to get. And this is another cool thing. I think I should have guys this get add dash p. Um, okay, well, that was the only thing we had to add. Um, um, all right, so do we have other things to talk about this on this one? Or you're probably going to have to reference the recording because I don't like writing all of that down. It's going to be a pain. Um, but I yep. feel like we kind of summed it up concisely. So facing issues with share config. Uh, well, let's just, let's just, it is kind of, we can't be concisely so uh, solution um, possible solution let's not jinx it um, um, possible solution uh, loop through uh, values and shared config of data flow upon data flow instantiation slash from dict um, oops uh, use uh, is config dict and convert value maybe question mark I'm not sure on convert value uh, uh to um, instantiate configs, uh, then go, or then win. Okay, so ew. it'd be better if we went through at time of, it'd be better if we did this when we instantiate the data flow, because like else, otherwise, every time you write a new orchestrator, it's going to have to go like know about shared config which is okay. and eh, it's okay for now. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, then in memory, when instantiating um, uh, operation op um, uh, grab from shared config if um, string is config. Okay, great. Um, and then Sakshan, were we good on that? Basically, you're gonna ping me when those are when those are done. Uh, yeah. Also, like, should I share my screen right now? Uh, 
Oh yeah, that's right. We're gonna you that. There. Yeah. So this is the command. Okay. So CSV missing. missing file name. Source source CSV. Oh, let's see. Let's see that command again. Um, okay. Source save. Source save. This seems pretty standard. Um. Oh, you might have to do, like, source save CSV file name. Let's see. Try source save dash CSV. Yeah, yeah try that. Source dot, okay, so it's looking in source dot source dot CSV. And it's looking in source.f.sourcecsv. Okay, wait, go up again. F equals. Okay, source.f.sourcecsv. Yeah, I tried that, but didn't work. Well, yeah, so source f. Let's see. And then instead of. Wait a minute. Okay, so go back up. So yeah, do do this command. Okay, so this command it's once source.f.source.csv. So source f. Why is it doing source and not save? Try try just doing source f. CSV file name. Why is it doing this? What the fuck? Um, like this? Yeah, like that. Try that. Missing file name. Okay, we have a problem with the config stuff. Um, yeah, I printed out in the cmd.py everything, and it's just it it gives the it gives the file name, but it's just not reading it in convert value. Don't know why. Weird. Okay, let's. It's this is going to be a value. pain. This is not going to be something we're solving right now. So let's. Uh, can you push this stack trace? Um, so we're going to merge that. Let's merge that thing and then just open a bug about it. Um, so we'll merge this pull request and then open a bug with this usage. Um, like uh, I can, uh, the, this or, same bug occurred uh, for a data flow source for some command I wrote. Okay. Well, maybe, okay, actually so, even better than this, let's open, or let's see. Yeah. Uh, can you make it? test case out of this actually and then just like put a return at the top of the test case uh, like how or no it's <laughs> fine no it's fine um just yeah just make a bug so we're gonna merge this and then make a bug um and then uh, the directory source the directory source yeah, yeah, we're yeah. gonna merge the directory source and then we'll yeah, make I'm a bug. gonna complete it and then we can make a bug. Yeah, so let's do so. Let's just say so bug with uh, after we merge directory source, we'll open a bug about um the we'll open a bug about the lack of ability to set file name on save source okay all right all right cool so we're wrapped up there yeah it the uh, the same bug comes for this command you can see oh okay List records, source df. Okay. Um, 
Okay, can you make a bug with this so that then I can just try this because I don't want to do this on the call right now. Okay, okay. Right. I'll make a bug about great, that. Great, great. So... issue for df config issues with second level source. All right. All right. So, and then Sudhanshu, um, I knew we want to talk about the merge command issue. And then is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, no. All right. Like, cool. yeah, yeah. Let's just, yeah, let's figure this out. Um, so let's see. Sorry, I hadn't had time to get to this. Um, this is a hectic week for me. I sent out I sent out my first uh, real version of a kernel patch. Um, so that was interesting. So I got, uh, got some feedback. I'm waiting for more feedback. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oops, what did I do? You guys can tell you me, right? Oh, wait, fuck, I just did it again. Can you still hear me? Did I mute myself? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, or wait. Oh wait, this is SK line. Wait, we want new. Yeah, ones. like there was SK line. <laughs> um, wait. Are we looking at? The merge command, so, uh, we're also going to look at this one, right? Yeah, like here, like I have only added the, uh, what was that? Yeah, like the auto escalant configuration file, like I have added. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, you got the config. Okay. You're still going to yeah. add the model, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. We were actually we talked about this at the beginning, and we talked about how we want to put together a tutorial um, to say um, we wanted to put together a tutorial to show people how to like go through all the models and then find out which one's the best. But we were talking about how Scikit has some weird things about their models, and so basically once we get the Auto SK Learn, that'll cover like all of Scikit. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, we also need to change the config stuff so that we turn these uh, underscores into um, dashes. Um, okay, so this, I mean, this looks good, but we're just going to wait on the model, right? So Yes. Yeah, yes. Great. Um, so I'm going to put the, uh, I'm trying to make use of the labels here so that I know when I need to review things. Um, so if you see a waiting changes on something and, okay, so yeah, from now on, if you see a waiting changes on something and you're waiting for me to review it, that means uh, you should you should basically ping me until I, I say something uh, because I'm forgetting things. Um, so let's see. Um, and then we want new op here. So, all right. And the merge uh, merge command in question, uh, where did we go? You guys have been doing good at managing multiple pull requests. Holy shit. Um, This has been a tough one. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, okay, so yeah, the config loader thing. Damn it, I was going to get that yesterday. Okay, so... John, you're not sharing the screen. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen? Oh, oh, oops. Thank you. You got, did you fix the config loader thing? Were you able to get that or? Let's see, merge. Okay. Oh, I think I haven't updated my, hey, freaking rats. God damn it. Got rats again. Um, I'm sitting outside. There's rats running by. Um, let's see. Okay, so I need to rerun those. I think that's why I'm getting a successful command there. So I need to rerun my. Uh, need to rerun my. Uh, yeah, that data flow create command. Yeah. Yes. All right, here we go. Sweet. Uh, damn it. All right, we got flow. Oh. Um. Right, that command, that one's the same. All right, so I think, I mean, I think the issue here is that the, we need the flow, we need to add the syntax for flow. Um, so flow, and then it'll be like, um, what the hell were we editing here? Well, let's just let's just dump it and then we'll do it. Okay, and then what were we editing? We have an SED command that says value value to PyPy package contents directory. Um, okay. Oh, mapping create. Okay, so on flow flow. We've really got to switch the left hand, right hand side thing on this. Uh, diff of all mapping to create. Okay, yeah, what's the best way to do this? this whole thing. Okay. Um, I think this is what we want here. A dot inputs. Oh, yeah, we can't do it there. Okay, that might have worked. Let's see, now let's try to do that with the, um, or where's that other command here? Uh, the command that we just ran, okay. 
There we go. Bam! All right, we just need the flow command. All right, sweet. So let's just copy on this up. We should be good to go. Boop doop. What the fuck? Let me suggest. Let me suggest. Dumb. All right, okay. Um, yeah, the solution is basically nix that and add the slow command here. All right, okay. I think this should be good because that makes that merge command work. We should just, uh, how many spaces are there there? There's this many spaces. There should be this many spaces. Perfect. All right, okay. Um, so then what is the next, like, let's, let's just run through the rest of this guy um, so that we can be sure that this is working now. So, um, oh, and I should probably regenerate the, or not the language stuff. Yeah, let me just regenerate this real quick. Or oh, wait a minute, you don't have that there. So we move this lines of code language by comments. Okay, it's this one now. Okay, and the should I data flow is just the should I data flow, which that needs updating too, uh, or at least yes, on my end, right? Yes, the need to be Well, let's see. You, I mean, you've updated, you've pushed the updated should I data flow, right? The JSON? Yes. Okay, so yes. in that case, yeah, because the merge command works, so now we should just do, that's what happens when we diagram it. Um, Where's the merge command? So we got the merge command, and then we want to do the diagram command. Okay. Where to go? Where to go? All right. Okay, it looks like it worked. Um, mermaid. Uh oh, something's not connected. All right, so. Get repository checked out, lines of code by language. Oh, are we missing another flow connection? I think we're missing mapping create into lines of code by language. Um, so. something okay so it should be lines of code by language dot inputs oops dot repo is now coming from uh, diff model dot create dot mapping 
is it map or mapping? Uh, mapping, yeah. Or mapping.create. And it's coming from the uh, mapping, I believe. Oh, well, who knows? We'll, we'll find out. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. PyPy package JSON go to safety check. Looking good. Looking good. Sweet. Very nice. All right. Let me. I'll post this guy up. Um. Um. All right. So and then at this point, yeah, we got. Did you get config loader? Did you fix this guy, or is this still? Oh, which one? Or right, let's see, MC config. This uh, this is showing. Or wait. Oh no, maybe we accidentally find and replace config loader there. Where are we? What's going on? Oh. I just mean, like, did you... F it says 404 not found. Okay, so... Um, no, like, I just, like, tried it. If it's working or not. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, I just want to okay. make sure, you know, while we're here, we can just finish it and see if it works yes. or not. Um, so... Uh, no, that shouldn't be it. So, let's see. Okay, it looks like this is working. Um... So, docs, usage, data flows. Okay, this is the command. There is the merge command. This is the, okay, so then we need to update this data flow. This is the one that we're just generated, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. so let's just, I'll just, um, I'll just do that since we have it. All right, and then we need to do this curl command. Dict object has no attribute directory. Well, what the hell? Because we should be doing new input. What the hell? Why is that not working? That means the input validation is off. Let's see. Vim dot 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 feature git dfml feature git feature operations 315. This Oh, repo is not the correct time type. Uh, wow, how did that happen? When did that happen? Uh, git repo spec. What's going on? The input validation is not working as it should. G 
Get repository checked out. Get repo checked out spec. Get repo spec. So, mapping create, created directory, lines of code by language. Okay, so I'm seeing another thing here, which is that maybe, oh my god, this tutorial probably hasn't worked since before the input validation was added, god damn it. Um, because we should be converting this thing into, um, you know, this thing should be getting converted. So, if we do, like, you know... DF. Uh, why is it not getting converted? All right. Um, Yeah, this spec stuff, like, this should be... If definition.spec is not none, okay, so... The value is dict, so... Internal server error. Oh, it just did the same thing again so fast I didn't see. Okay. Um. Where did we print that out? Okay. Mapping. Lines of code by language. Oh, because we don't create a new input object when we're redirecting. So we lose... Okay, do you guys see what happened here? So basically, when we do redirection, we don't create a new input object uh, based on the new definition. So this is a bug. This is a big, this is a big bug. Um, DFML, um, DF memory... So, yeah, the problem here is that, I mean, the real problem here is that we're about to have, well, that's okay, we'll just give it a default value, but, um, so when we are redirecting, where did it go? Um, oh, good old gather inputs. Um, so here, when we redirect, we just take... We're looking at by origin, we append the parameter. The definition should be the operation input input name. Why is it not? Um, you see what it, you see? You guys see what's going on here? No, like I'm. Um quite not understand. Okay. So basically when we do you know that stuff how you did the, the sub spec and everything, so with the spec yes, yes. we um we uh we basically we use that to create a new input object. Um like the input object and the input has the value um and well what else does it have? It has the value uh, the it has the name and the value and um the definition, but it's creating 
I wonder if this is because we're creating a parameter rather than oh it's because we're creating a parameter rather than input so basically that spec stuff what it does is it says okay you are you know creating a new you created some value of this type well is that if that type is a dictionary um, and it has a spec uh, then it better conform to that spec um, right that was what the whole sub spec stuff did and with the spec it's just like one level right so the thing is when we create when we do redirection we create parameters and parameters are ended up get, being what get passed unless we do, i thought we did inputs at some point here um but and a parameter is not the same as the input right it's a different object and so it's got different constructor and so we lose the validation that we did i believe is what happening is what's happening um so, so where the hell does that go? Um, we need to, what's like, what's run? Uh, run an operation. Okay, and it creates, uh, it takes an input set context and it runs the operation. So run dispatch is gonna take a parameter set and it's gonna pass it's gonna press the parameter set as dict so we lose the input validation oh sad day for security uh, sad sad day okay parameter and we're immediately going to see that it's going to get mad at us because we don't have a URL uh, because a repo a, a repo checked out spec has a commit and a URL, so it's going to start yelling at us. Um, here's parameter, which is just a named tuple. Wow, sad, sad day. Uh, okay. Um, how do we give you all of the wonderful benefits of an input object? Let's find out. Um, parameter key value origin input okay what is let's see uh, oh, this was an interesting bug okay so yeah so await parameter set as dict Okay, oh, and this is going to look, this is a parameter set. Memory parameter set. Where's as dict? Is it in base parameter set? Base parameter set as dict. Parameter key, parameter value. Value. Oh, origin is the input. Okay, so it has the value set. Yeah, it's just losing all, any and all input validation here, which is just sad. So, um, we should probably make a parameter a subclass of an input. Uh, because what it's got an origin it's got a definition it's got a key and a, okay the only thing it needs is a key um, so we'll just go ahead and make it a subclass here and then we'll end up with that um, wonderful wonderful input validation um, so and then we're going to have to give default values to repo spec um, We're going to be key stir value any origin is also required. Put definition, definition. All right, great. Uh, well, I'm glad we figured found this one because this could have been caused like actual security problems. Um, that would be very bad. 
Although it would be kind of good because it's uh, if you have a uh, so basically, if you have actually, maybe we should file a CVE. That would be funny. Um, oh, wait a minute. How much paperwork will that cost me? If you, you guys know what CVEs are, so a CVE. I think we've probably gone over this, but a CVE is basically like there's like this global database where um, if you have a security vulnerability, you should put it in this database. Um, and uh, that way people know to update their software. Um, and so basically like um, um, if you like the security advisories page on GitHub is trying to do similar things with this um, and, and make it so that like um, it, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, basically like if you find a vulnerability, yeah. Yeah, I think I'll have to drop. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, know. hey, yeah, you guys always always feel free to drop. I hope you guys know that. I'm we're we're obviously we go long, so if we're done with your stuff, feel free to drop whenever. See ya. Have a good one. Bye. All right. Okay. And now we should end up with the input validation that we wanted, the input validation we deserve. Um. Let's see. What in the hell? Uh, origin is different in this case. Um, so we're just going to leave origin like that and let's say self.origin equals origin to skip any validation done on the origin. Key value origin definition. Okay, there we go. So now we should be presented with a nice spec validation error. Yes. Perfect. This is what we wanted. So now we convert this thing, this mapping, right, gets converted into this Git repository checked out. And it says, hey, you, you didn't give me a URL or a commit. Um, so uh, now, I mean, the nice part of that is that we can just assign default values. Um, so, and now we should, uh, now we should be home free, hopefully. Uh, URL equals none. All right, well, there's something going on here. All right, um, well, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? Um, new missing required to require positional arguments, URL and commit. So, I mean, it's quite possibly a bad install. Uh, installs good. I don't know. Okay, so I don't want to take any more of your time, so I'll work on this now um, after we do the meeting and uh, we can conclude the meeting and then we will, um, and I'll post this up there. So I think that you're, I think at this point, like this is the last part of the tutorial that you needed changes on, right? Yes, yes. All right, so let's just, we'll just call this, I will finish this out immediately following our meeting um, and push up some stuff to that branch and then we'll merge that. Nice work on this. This has been, uh, obviously, this one has been very tough. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. All right, cool. Um, anything else from anyone? Sorry, I know uh, we went no. super long today. Holy shit, That's this is like the longest point. meeting ever. All right, great. Yes. Cool, so... Uh, Needed flow still have an issue with um, spec. All right, thank you guys, um, and have a good night. And I will uh, talk to you whenever. So, see you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.
Thank you.